Coming up, the entrepreneur setting up shop at the Bull Ring, paying just a fraction of the rent. The vinyl revival as records experienced their highest sales in more than 15 years. And the great Easter getaway begins. That's ITV News Central at 6. Coming up, six people are arrested after acid is thrown at a teenager, leaving her with serious burns to her face and neck. Hello and welcome to ITV News Central. On the programme tonight, police make six arrests after a teenager has chemicals thrown in her face on her doorstep. The Great Midlands Getaway is underway. This is the starting gate for the bank holiday rush. Spinning back into fashion, we look at the revival of vinyl. Easter is about chocolate. And we look at the meaning of Easter through the eyes of a seven-year-old. Good evening. A 19-year-old woman has been left with serious burns when an attacker threw what's thought to be caustic fluid in her face. It's left her with serious injuries. The fluid may have burned her throat and lungs. It happened when she answered a knock at her front door and police believe she was deliberately targeted. Tonight, police said they've arrested six people. Stacey Foster reports. Tonight, this quiet road in the black country is the centre of a major police investigation. An investigation into an attack which has left a teenage woman with burns to her face and neck. Officers say she answered a knock at the door at 3 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. The caller immediately threw liquid in her face. They think it might be high strength cleaning fluid and highly caustic. The victim has 15% burns, but the worry now is that she swallowed the fluid, which may have burned her lungs and throat. It's a worrying time for her friends. They're all lovely people. Like, I, I wouldn't have expected this to happen at all. I used to chill with them all, so I wouldn't have expected it to happen at all. She just she goes on holiday, but she'd hold nothing any more than that. She's always working, all the time. Yeah. That's and, it. I mean, how do you feel about what, what's happened to her now, today? <sighs> well, a bit shocked, to be honest. A bit shocked. I'm going to... Uh, Give her a call to see if she's all right. It's a bit upsetting. Police say the suspected attacker raced down several roads and paths on the estate in Tiverdale to get away. CCTV footage filmed him with three other men. This is now being studied by detectives. Tonight, West Midlands police say they've arrested four men and two women. Three of them are being held on suspicion of wounding, one on suspicion of conspiracy to wound, and two suspected of attempting to pervert the course of justice. Stacey Foster, ITV News. A schoolboy has been arrested after a pensioner was dragged from his car and attacked outside a pub in the black country. 84-year-old Michael Green needed surgery and is recovering in hospital after the attack on Friday night in Bilston. His family appeared on ITV News Central yesterday asking for help to catch those responsible. The car was stolen and found abandoned 10 minutes later. A 14-year-old boy is being questioned on suspicion of robbery. Four women have been arrested in connection with a fraud investigation at a school in Birmingham. They're being questioned about a plot to send bogus resignation letters at Alderley Primary School in Saltley. Police say the arrests are not connected to the Trojan Horse investigations, which are looking at allegations of a takeover plot in Birmingham schools by Muslim hardliners. A murder investigation has begun three months after a man was found seriously injured in Moseley. 50-year-old Philip Floyd died in hospital after he was found collapsed on Forest Road in January. A post-mortem revealed he died after a severe blow to the head. Police have released this CCTV and are appealing for the drivers of two cars and a man seen in the area to contact them. Further tests will be carried out on lamb dishes at takeaways after some were found to contain other meats or no meat at all. Consumer watchdog Witch tested 30 lamb curries and kebabs at takeaways in Birmingham. 16 were found to be mixed and five samples were found not to contain any lamb meat at all.
What we found is that the lamb has been substituted or mixed with um, cheaper cuts, so chicken or beef. Um, I mean, we don't know whether the, um, whether the substitution happened by the takeaway owners um, or further up the supply chain. And that's what we're asking the FSA and the uh, local authorities to look into to stop food fraud. The bank holiday rush has begun. The AA and RAC are predicting that there will be very long queues at the usual trouble spots in the West Midlands, like where else but the junction between the M5 and M6. Of course, and uh, the good weather is likely to send people in their droves to the outdoor attractions. But large numbers are either abroad at the moment or heading there in search of sunshine. Here's our correspondent, Keith Wilkinson. Taking off this afternoon, another jet load of people with one A. To get a little bit of warmth on us for the Easter holidays. Because we were just a bit down in the dumps about the weather here, it has perked up now. It's been a bad year so far, hasn't it, apart yeah. from just the last few days? Yeah, so we might even have a heat wave here, so we might have picked the wrong week to go. <laughs> the Great Midlands Getaway is underway. This is the starting gate for the bank holiday rush. At Birmingham Airport, the number of passengers flying away for Easter has gone up by more than 11% on last year. So this weekend is actually the busiest weekend over the two-week period. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, we're expecting around 100,000 people to travel through Birmingham Airport. Over the two-week period, though, around 400,000 passengers are travelling. Some are off to much hotter climates like Pakistan. Obviously meet my family, yeah, my family all day. So obviously my wife family yeah, and my dad's side is there, so obviously I'm going to meet my family. People driving to the airports have been advised to allow plenty of time for their journeys. The roads could well be a lot busier than normal. I think if you think about it, since Christmas we've had about three or four months of uh, people, when people haven't had a holiday. We've had some pretty nasty weather in there, floods which have stopped people going to certain parts of the country. And now the sun's out, people do want to get away and have a break. Uh, and we do think people will take to the roads in their masses this weekend. We are predicting around over 18 million people take to the roads in the UK. The worst days could be Good Friday, thanks to good weather, and Monday, when everyone comes back. Keith Wilkinson, ITV News. You always feel like you want to go on holiday, don't you, when you see airport shots? But not when you see the traffic. No, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, almost 100 start-up businesses are being given the chance to take a shop at one of Europe's largest shopping centres, but just paying a fraction of the rent. Yes, pop-up shops usually open for just a few weeks using empty retail units, but this one is in one of the most expensive locations in the country. Our business correspondent Mark Goff reports. A shop like this in the Bullring in Birmingham would cost the thick end of £300,000 a year to rent, about five grand a week. Way out of reach for young entrepreneurs like these. But for the next couple of months, almost a hundred start-up businesses will get the chance to show thousands of shoppers their ideas. I'm the only producer of Bombay Mix chocolate bars. So each bar's got about 20% Bombay Mix inside. This is a pop-up shop. It wasn't being rented for a couple of months, so rather than leave it empty, the Bullring has rented it to Pop Up Britain, a scheme to help startups get on the high street in shops that are vacant. We know lots of startups, and they were coming to us saying, Look, you know, I can do X, Y, and Z. What I can't do is get my products to market. I don't want to take a 10 year lease on a big shop. Um, it's just not feasible for me at all. But there's, there's no way that I can, I can get onto any kind of big high street. The big landlords will just laugh in my face. So we thought, it's ridiculous, <laughs> let's do something about that. Um, so we, we're kind of the, the buffer between the bigger landlords and the smaller brands and pulling those guys together now. It, it, it's quite a big shop, isn't it? Ordinarily, how much would it be to rent that for a year? Yeah, I mean, it's about 3,500 square feet, so it is a large retail space. It would be in excess of a quarter of a million, just so for rent. These, just rent. these little guys couldn't afford that? Not at all, no. So, I mean, it's a great opportunity for us to, to look at these, you know, start-up retailers, designers, uh, give them an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to showcase their, their product. Yeah. Because I mean, obviously you don't want an empty store either, do you? Precisely, yeah. I mean, I'd much rather have something in there trading than, and as you say, just a boarded up shop. Uh, that's not good for customers, it's not good for the centre. There'll be 10 new businesses every week in the shop, each paying £400 a week rent, a fraction of the five grand.
Jess Jeetley from Walsall was struggling to find clothes to fit her petite frame, so she decided to start her own brand. I was literally working from home, uh, so on the kitchen table with my laptop uh, and iPad, just searching suppliers online and I found them in China. My three-year-old was running around me in the house and um, trying to find suppliers. Eventually I found some in China and I thought I needed to go and see them in person. I told my husband we need to get a plane and we went to China and we visited the suppliers within two days and that's how we started. This rugby wear brand is another kitchen table startup. Well, I'm from Birmingham uh, and the opportunity to have a store in the centre of the ball ring is just fantastic. Um, I never thought I'd get a store in the centre of Birmingham, you know, growing up as a child. So it's brilliant to have friends and family come and see what I've been working so hard on for the last few years. It allows me, for someone small like myself, to come to a fantastic place like the ball ring, who really, I don't think I'd ever dream of be able to afford the rents um, or the, you know to have a place with the footfall like it is um, and it would be great it's just great for people to come in and be seen in a place like this um, and it brings the brand prestige up for the brand um, and it gives it's brilliant feedback for well it's great to hear feedback from the customers um, which otherwise I wouldn't normally have. Jess was an optician but she's quit that the dream of almost every entrepreneur to give up the day job. I'm still doing it, I'm still working in IT. So uh, one day the chocolate empire will take off and the IT will drop. But until then I have to do both. And the pop-up idea works. When the Bombay mixed chocolate was on sale in a pop-up shop in a posh arcade in London, one of the customers who popped by was the boss of a department store. I was the CEO of Boots. Um, up north in Manchester who came past and he liked it and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's not in there yet but you know it's just that opportunity which unfortunately you don't normally get. You never know who walks through the door. And they never know what doors it'll open. Mark Goff, ITV News, Birmingham. It's got to be better for everyone to have shops in yes. rather than just empty units and then yeah. if they're a success they'll all make money out of it won't they? Let's Great. hope they have a good weekend. Right, so still to come here on ITV News Central. It's a chicken! It's yellow and it's got a bee and it's got wings. <laughs> we find out all about Easter as understood by primary school children. And we've made it to the bank holiday weekend. So find out what's in store for Easter across the West Midlands in a few minutes' time. Now it's our favourite story of the day, this one. Do you remember the first record you bought, Steve? Certainly do, and I've got it here, it's just over there. We'll bring it in in a minute. Great, OK, we'll see that in just a while. But apparently vinyl has experienced a recent resurgence with sales the highest they've been in more than 15 years. This Saturday, it's Record Store Day. It's an annual campaign encouraging music fans like us to visit their local independent record shop. And there are more stores seeing the effects of the vinyl revival in Birmingham, as Joe Lobo reports. Doomed by the digital age, or perhaps not. In a world where smaller and faster technology is king, the vinyl is one relic still sending music fans in a spin. Such is the popularity, a number of record stores have now sprung up in Birmingham, such as this one here in Digbeth. We didn't think at the time there was enough record shops in Birmingham. Um, that, the ones that are here are great, but um, you've got you know cities like Glasgow and London and Manchester and they're all like thriving with rec record shops and we just thought that there was a demand for it here. The record shops still in Birmingham say business is better than ever. Swordfish Records has been around since an off-the-wall Michael Jackson made sure we couldn't get enough of it. You might be wondering, what keeps music lovers tied to their decks? A vinyl record is purely analogue. The grooves on that record represent exactly what happened in that recording studio. And also you get something that's kind of tactile and kind of a little bit more um, imposing. You, you know, you get something that's real. It's not just some of the classic albums from some of the older bands, such as the Rolling Stones, which are leading this resurgence in the records. In fact, 
some of the newer releases from contemporary artists such as the Arctic Monkeys are fueling this vinyl revival. 2013 was a great year for the record industry as a whole. What we saw was that vinyl accounted for 0.8% of the overall market, so it was relatively small. But actually, we sold 800,000 LPs, which was double the number sold in 2012. Some record stores, which have been forced to face the music and close down, have found other ways to survive. Dan Reddington owned a shop in Birmingham for more than 40 years. Now he's based his warehouse in Redditch and is going steady after taking his music business online. It got too, too hard to, um, to keep going on uh, overheads and stuff. Now we've packed in the shop. We're doing mail order all the time now. The vinyl revival is partially down to the success of International Record Store Day. Its aim is to celebrate the culture of the independent record store. Fans queue to pick up their limited edition pressings, while being serenaded by bands at special gigs. It's been a bit of a lifeblood for, you know, for record shops um, because of the publicity it gets, the exclusive releases. Um, you know, it is getting people, particularly younger people, you know, back into buying records. Vinyl will never turn the tables on download sales, but it has found a way to live alongside its more advanced younger cousin. Joe Lobo, ITV News. Oh, there's some memories there, isn't there? Now, go on. I want to see the one that you right. first bought. First, well, this was the first one I ever got. It was a Christmas present. I was five. Right. I still play it to, to this day. It's a great rock and roll album. Some fantastic guitaring on there, if anyone's into that. Um, first one I ever bought. Went yes. to the shop, bought Complete Madness. But this yeah. is my pride and joy. I was a little bit older when I got this. Pearl Jam. It's yes. a rock band, for those that don't know. It's a 12-inch, but look at the vinyl itself. Ooh. Brilliant white. Or grunge band, the director's saying. Is it right? Yeah, he's trying he's, to He's, trying he's to well like informed, cool. isn't yeah. he? Um, so what have you got here? Shall I show you mine? It's a little bit well worn, yes, well so used. Look at the, uh, look well at the frayed. Loved. Look at all the frayed age, but <laughs> it is soul to soul, back to life, and I still play it. And look at all the scratches. So, not as much love there, I think. Anyway, there is something about fun. the sound is wonderful. But, oh yeah, yeah. You have to look it. after them, though, don't you? Not like CDs. They're not as a. They're no. As, as tough and you as can those. read them. There's things on them. Yeah. Anyway. Right. We better get them. Telling us to move on. <laughs> okay. The national and international news is a few moments away. Let's take a look what's coming up with Alistair Stewart. We'll have the latest from South Korea on the fatal ferry accident. More bodies are found, many more people are still unaccounted for. The captain speaks of his deep shame and sorrow. Here the crisis at the co-op bank generates huge losses that mean other businesses will have to go. And Catherine and William on the tourist trail, hopefully not off it. Join Mary Nightingale and me at 6.30. And also coming up on ITV over the bank holiday weekend is a new drama 30 years after entertainer Tommy Cooper died on stage of a heart attack. It stars the shameless actor David Threlfall donning the famous fez. The programme looks at the last 20 years of Cooper's life away from the limelight, including his long-term affair with his assistant, which he never told his wife about. We wanted to do some justice and some honour to Tommy because particularly because we met Vicky, his, his daughter, who was, who, was, who was really supportive and very open about sharing information um, about, about uh, life with Dad in that sense. And we actually filmed in his old house. Just one point. Yes. Never trust a magician. Your watch? Yes. Good. <laughs> Tommy Cooper, not like that, like this, is on ITV on Easter Monday at 9 o'clock. I would suggest that's probably well worth watching. And something else worth keeping an eye on is what's going on at Aston Villa. Gareth Owen is here. Well, we've got two coaches suspended. What is the latest? I really wish I knew, <laughs> Steve. It, it, it's, it's, it's an incredible week. What we know for certain is that Gary Carter and Ian Carvalhouse uh, were suspended. Gordon Cowens and Shay Given have stepped up to replace them. And the thing we definitely know is that Villa, at the end of this week of disruption, stand at just four points clear of relegation. They play Southampton on Saturday in a game they really need to win. Manager Paul Lambert held his weekly press conference today ahead of that game. And as you might expect, there were repeated questions about those suspensions, but he refused to give anything away. Due to being a legal investigation, uh, I can't really comment on anything, so I think if you appreciate that answer. I respect you asking me the question and, and I think you've got to respect my answer and if you want to talk about the football side of things and results, I'm happy to answer it. But 
I think um, you've got to respect my answer to that. Mm, and it went on like that for quite some time. There is some actual football to talk about, though. Let's look ahead to those Easter matches now. ITV Central Sport Report, sponsored by WeWantAnyCar.com, the Cash for Cars website. So, how will the players react at home to Southampton? It will be an unchanged Villa side, and anything less than a win would really pile the pressure on, because just have a look at Villa's run-in. They're away to Swansea, who are also fighting for their lives at the foot of the table, and Manchester City, who could still be in with a shout of the title by then. And realistically, they need two more wins before they can start breathing a little easier. Don't forget, we have another club looking over their shoulders, so it'll be a big Easter for West Brom. But again, it looks tricky with Man City, Arsenal and the Midlands derby against Stoke. Some tough times in the Premier League. When the Championship, derby, no automatic promotion, is still not impossible. But the playoffs can be guaranteed with a draw or a win at Doncaster tomorrow night. On Saturday, already promoted Leicester face QPR. But probably the most important game for any of our teams is Birmingham. They are at Nottingham Forest on Saturday and then have the first of three home games in a row. They've not won at home since October last year and are desperate for points to avoid relegation. Here are the thoughts of their former player, Paul Devlin. It's a huge weekend. Um, obviously, Forest struggling a little bit and, and Birmingham's away record being what it is. I think it's a great chance for us to go there and get a result. The worrying fact is that after Forest, we've got sort of three home games on the bounce. And if you look how we've done at home this season, it, you know, it could be a could be very difficult for us. Interesting times. Now then, the motorsport season is getting into full swing this weekend and the touring cars are back in the Midlands at Donington Park. The British champion is Andy Jordan, who was born in Sutton Coldfield and lives in Lichfield. He'll be there as he looks to defend his title, but it's been a busy week for him. Jordan is also taking part in the first ever World Rallycross Series. And earlier this week, I met up with him at the launch of that competition. <laughs> When you're at the top of your game, it's a brave person who'll try something completely different. Rallycross is completely different. The dirt, the four-wheel drive, the acceleration. Motorsport's new kid on the block is a different world compared to the more traditional touring cars. And that's where Andy Jordan has made his name, British champion last year, leader after one fixture this season. But now he's signed up to something new, the first World Rally Cross Championship. And at the launch this week, Jordan was proving quite a draw. Well, I've had to come down to a circuit in deepest Kent to find him, but here he is, the man of the moment in touring cars, Andy Jordan from Litchfield. So, first of all, for those who know the motorsport but don't know this sort of thing, what is Rallycross? Rallycross is a mixture of tarmac and dirt using four-wheel drive cars, 600 horsepower, 0-16, just under two seconds. So, uh, very fast cars, um, six cars in a race, very short, punchy races, and it makes for exciting and aggressive racing. It's quick. It puts a smile on your face. I haven't driven this car for uh, since last year, so the first time I accelerated, it uh, yeah, feels pretty quick. Tomorrow, though, Andy will be back behind a more familiar wheel, back on the touring car circuit at Donington Park in Leicestershire. Yeah, we started our uh, 2014 season off well. We're leading the championship. We had two wins at Brands Hatch a couple of weeks ago, and then we go to my home race this weekend at Donington. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be completely different from driving this, but it's uh, a really busy week for me, really exciting. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting to my home track and uh, hopefully three strong race results. You always get great support there with it being your home race. You know, you know the extra support you get. Um, so that's really good. It's always nice to go there. It's a fantastic track anyway. Um, so I always look forward to going to Donington. And as for the rally cross, the British fixture will be here at Lydon Hill in May, followed by 10 meets around the world. I say what, those cars aren't much to look at, but oh, they pack a punch, an incredible experience. Look great fun. <laughs> Gareth, thank you very much.
Now, they've been on the shelves for months, but finally this weekend, chocolate eggs will be opened across the Midlands as we celebrate Easter. And did you know that one in three eggs bought in the UK is actually made at Cadbury in Bourville? Well, it's not surprising, as every day 1.2 million cream eggs are made there. Getting hungry, but not it's uh, also a time of religious significance, of course. We sent Fred Dynage to one school to find out exactly what Easter is all about. <laughs> What is Easter? It's part when spring stuff come out. A time when you go and look for Easter eggs. Jesus died on the cross and three days later he came alive again and that was on Easter Sunday. God was planning him to come back alive which is called Good Sunday. Oh. oh yeah, he came to alive on Easter Sunday. Jesus. Yeah, no, I think it was Good Friday. No, Easter side. No, it's Good Friday. He, he he died on Good Friday. Why? Why? Why would they call it Good Friday then? In Lent, which leads up to Easter, you have to give up something. I already gave up something, messing around on the chair. It's so hard to choose what I can give up. Well, you could give up sweets. Not. I've given up bananas. <laughs> television. Television! And what did you give up? Vegetables. <laughs> Vegetables? <laughs> chocolate. So if I was to give you a chocolate egg, would you say no thank you? No. Matilda, would you give up chocolate for Easter? No, fair enough, okay. Have, a, have an egg. Why do we have Easter eggs? Celebrate when Jesus died, of course. Because they taste nice. <laughs> That's what just Easter's about, chocolate. What about Easter egg hunts? If you were hiding an Easter egg somewhere, where would you hide it? I'll hide it in my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Easter bonnets. That's an incredible thing you've got on your head, Zoe. I mean, being honest with me, Nathaniel, how do you feel wearing that? Silly. What about mine? You look, yeah, funny you look about silly. Silly? I mean, what's that you've got on your head? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel walking around with that on? I feel yeah. stupid. Do, do you? Because it does look a bit like an Indian headdress, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't tell your mum I said that. <laughs> Happy Easter, you two. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. <laughs> Brilliant. They say it so beautifully, don't they? So truthful, just as it is. And, and they don't care. And there's no one better qualified to do that kind of story than Fred after all his years <laughs> on How. Oh, yes. You can see how well he gets on with the children. They, they love him, don't they? I think they just thought, well, he's one of us. He's one, Especially yeah, that silly is. hat, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we loved it. Very and good fun. <laughs> everyone wants to know the next piece of information. Yes. The weather forecast. Here's Lucy Kite. A short break. Whatever the weather. ITV Local Weather, sponsored by Centre Parks. Hello. Well, tonight's weather picture really says it all. Clouds, sunshine, maybe even the odd rainbow here and there as we move through the Easter bank holiday weekend. It's also going to feel a little bit cooler. High pressure that has kept us nice and settled over recent days is moving eastwards. Low pressure's building. Temperatures are going to take a tumble. It's going to feel chilly as the wind comes in from an easterly direction. You're going to notice a difference in the temperature. So as for the rest of today then, well, gradually the cloud will clear. We'll be left with clearing skies across our region. This will allow temperatures to drop. We've got a really chilly night ahead of us. Out in the countryside, a touch of ground frost is possible and a fresh start to the day tomorrow. The good news is about Good Friday, we're going to see some sparkly sunshine through the day and it's going to feel well a little bit cooler but not as bad as it's going to feel over the coming days so as we move into the rest of the weekend this easterly wind causing us problems you'll need to wrap up even in that sunshine and then for sunday all of us seeing a spell of rain so make the most of that sunshine see you later on itv local weather sponsored by center parks And just before we go, let's give you a reminder of tonight's top stories in the Midlands. Six people are being questioned by police in connection with an attack on a teenager in Tividale. 
The 19-year-old has been left with serious burns after caustic fluid was thrown in her face as she opened the door of her home on Tuesday. Further tests will be carried out on lamb dishes at takeaways after 16 out of 30 dishes tested in Birmingham were found to contain other cheaper meats. Consumer watchdog Witch found five samples didn't contain any lamb at all. And the bank holiday rush has begun. The AA and RAC are predicting that there will be very long queues at the usual trouble spots in the West Midlands, such as the junction of the M5 and the M6. Well, for those of you who will be making, making it for the roads, getting away, I do wish you the best of luck and I hope your travels are safe and swift. Uh, that's it from us for this week. It certainly uh, is. It certainly is. Website itv.com slash central from us for now. Bye-bye. Happy Easter. Bye-bye.